Welcome back, modelers. And sorry it's been a little bit of a delay. I've had a few things, you know, happen that's kind of taken away my speaking ability. But I have a really good video for you today. Something that just might add a, a bunch of a brand new technique to your repertoire when it comes to chipping. So we talked a little bit about this before. Um, when... I was looking at this detail shine enhancer and looking at some of the lesser known reasons for, um, you know, for using it other than making your details shine. So what we're going to do is we're going to play around with this a little bit more today and see if this can work equal, better, um, what are the advantages, disadvantages of doing it this way when we look at chipping. The other thing is what tools work best. So I've got a fiberglass pen, I got steel wool, sandpaper, toothpicks, uh, just regular toothbrush, and we're going to see what is going to be king and what's going to help out. So I've started out here. I've just used Vallejo aluminum and then put a clear coat over it onto my sample piece. And now what we're going to do is put this in the man. It's on there a little tight. Put this stuff on it. Now, when you look at it, it's very much like a grease oil, like wax. And so I'm curious if this is something that you think you could probably get elsewhere for a lot less. I imagine there's some kind of industrial supply methodology, something where you could probably get this uh, for about 10 times cheaper. So stay tuned for that. If you've seen, I mean, it, it very much smells like some kind of grease for lubricant. And it's hydrophobic, so a lot of that would kind of make sense, right? So I'm just going to lather this on and I want to make it thin, thin coating. If you have something thick like that, obviously it, the paint's not going to stick at all. It's going to come off really easy. We want to have that just kind of generalized chipping. So I'm going to just wax on in this and get it to just work into the paint a bit. Because in theory, it's going to have less bite when we have the paint on here. So we put it into strategic areas and be able to do chipping without having to worry about um, the sometimes temperamental hairspray spray technique, which isn't a super hard technique, but if you're a beginner, this might be a lot less learning curve. But I don't know. We're going to have to find out from the experiment. Okay. So I'm just laying this. Try to get it nice and thin. And equal. Probably go after this and get like a paper towel or something to make it so it's even more uniform. But I want to be a little bit general with this because it is it is a little expensive probably for what it is uh, that's a whole nother test but at this point and it's a little tricky to find not impossible but I want to if it is as good as I think it's going to work I want to use it sparingly but I mean imagine I don't anticipate anybody like putting this all over their entire bird if you're gonna make like some really worn torn bird maybe but for the most part that's not what we're gonna be looking for so got that on there kind of grab a paper towel or a napkin and I'm just gonna kind of even that out from here I'm going to then put a coat of olive drab over it 
And then there's where the experimentation with all the chipping will pursue. Just to show you a little bit of what I've done. So, tell my wife, but I just stole a little quote thing that was on the floor. Um, I don't think she's going to notice. So, I just used that to just kind of polish it in. And I'm hoping it doesn't need to be very thick. I can have this just polished into the paint. And that's going to make a hydrophobic layer. And so, that's what we have here. Okay. So now for a small drab, and then we'll get to the testing. All right, as you can see, we have our olive drab that has been painted, and I just used uh, AK Re Real Colors on it. And uh, one thing to note with the web with AK's website where it's talking about their recommendations on how to do this, they say to use some kind of uh, well, well, not straight up acrylic, but some kind of lacquer or enamel. And it kind of makes sense because I imagine if you use a straight up water-based acrylic over the wax, it's hydrophobic. It's just going to bead up. So um, word of warning there. Now, one thing that I've already noticed is I've marked on here different things I'm going to test. And in some areas, maybe the uh, it was just thick enough or whatever. And the paint already just started coming off with me on the Sharpie. So that's interesting. It's, it's very much, uh, in some places might be very, very simple to come off. And But we'll see how good of an effect it actually is. That's the end result, right? We want to look at ease of use, but we also want to look at the end result. So I've just got this uh, disgusting toothbrush. Let's see what happens. I'm going to start just gingerly. Okay, nothing. Let's go a little harder. Okay, interesting. So now more force. And I imagine if I had raised details some panel lines. The force wouldn't really, may the force be with you. The The force would be a little bit uneven, right? And so it would be more chipping there and that could be a good effect. So, but this is a bit uniform and it's just slowly getting little speckles coming up. So that is the effect with just a brush, not bad. Kind of cool. Okay, well, let's look at toothpicks and other sharp bits. Let's grab. So I've got tweezer here. And let's see what happens. Do. Okay, wow. So it's uh, just a simple wood toothpick. And just kind of poking at it and you can see how it's just easily just coming off and just chip okay i want to make a long scrape it does a little bit of that i don't know uh interesting but not the diffusion i really want but for certain areas I don't know. Uh, I think the trick would be better with brush and a toothpick. If I use a finer piece, I mean, I can probably even just da -da 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 just go crazy at it. I'm a little sharper. Okay, I'll have to grab um, probably a good old. Um, airbrush needle. Yeah, this one's a bit dirty, but probably needs to be replaced anyway. But so I can, and it's literally like I have a really small pen that I'm using to, to just get at those little bits. It's pretty cool. I like that. Okay. 
Next up, we want to try some abrasion, right? Not just a chip from a rock debris hitting the aircraft or tank, but it's more of an abrasion. So let's try just lightly sanding with 400 grit. And these are infinity sticks, um, but you could use another 400 grit sandpaper. Uh, lines let's do some technique here do maybe let's see what circles look like this is just one direction here and no I'm not talking about the band okay there you go so to quite quote Mike Mike Rinaldi you can never have too small of a chip That is pretty dope, I'd have to say. So that looks pretty dang cool. Um, let's go with this finer grit, um, an 800. Let's see what kind of effects it does. Yeah, a little more, very subtle. And Kind of creates the randomness for you. And I think the fact that my painting job was a little rushed and a little bit, not the best, a little bit of flarm and whatnot going on. Uh, it's picking up that flarm. Let's maybe here put in more force. Okay. All right, so that gets your more force. Wonder what happens. Ooh, yeah. Okay, so I kind of like that 400 grit. And adding a little more force to it gives you a bit more of the abrasion. So sandpaper is doing quite well. Let's go with steel wool. Steel wool, I think this is uh, some double lot. Let's just do nice and soft. Soft kitty. Um, not much, but you definitely get some good long scratches. Okay, let's do a little bit of a swirling motion. Okay. Okay. I wonder if this is... Let me try this. I think this might be a little bit different grit. Maybe you gotta get some coarse. But I imagine the course would just create a lot of scratches. So maybe this would be really good for scratches, but... Hmm. The other cool thing with it is when you do that, you kind of have some gradation, subtle effect that's going on there. And if you layer the paint on it, it might even help out with that. So I might have to try... Mm, yeah, I don't know if I want to do a thick, uh, coarser grit, but if you just work it, work it. Pretty cool fact, I think. I might have to just look at some beat up aircraft <laughs> this weekend, take some reference photos to kind of think, well, I mean, what is the right look? Because we have a bunch of different looks but what is right um, so let's go with the scotch oh not only works well on your dishes it works well on this it comes up very little effort I push in a lot of effort um 
And then it goes in and looks like that. Kind of cool. Um, real, a lot of force. You can do a few things there. But let's just daintily here. Yeah, that might be a little more aggressive than what I want. It's probably not the winner. Now, for the one that I hope is the winner in some respects because I paid 10 bucks for one of these things, um, is our fiberglass. So this is the first time I actually used one. So probably gonna get some people in the chat going, no, 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 you, you, you don't do it that way. Let's see what happens if I can spoil it out a little. So in just one motion, let's do circles. Hmm. So I don't know, it's creating definitely a hard edge, as you can see. So not exactly my favorite. Kind of attack it from the side. That's a little better. So if I kind of chip at it from the side here, it seems to be vary the angle. You can get some good effect there. So I can see myself being totally biased because I don't want 10 bucks to go to waste. All right, huh, very weird. It's the, let me try over here. It, maybe it's just that location just didn't have as much of the paste on it. And, Cause that's kind of getting there and it's doing pretty good. So that's interesting. Let's see what happens if I tighten this up a bit. Maybe. Okay, okay. To be honest, this is probably the way we're supposed to use it in the first place. Um, That's got some good effect to it. In some of these areas where it's coming off pretty hefty, it could very well be that I just had extra wax there. Because if you want to very much make sure that there's a chip in a specific area, you know, you can have a lot of that wax and just it'll easily come off. So you could do something like that. Okay. Hmm. Well, what do we think? So the fiberglass here looks, I, I think, pretty natural. Um, other good contenders. I mean, if you want to do just individual scratches, then toothpick, right? Um, the brush did well at creating more of like fine dots without having long scratches. The 400 grit I kind of like, but the problem is, depending on how you're doing the motion of everything, you might have these long, you can kind of see that it was abrased in one direction kind of thing. And that, I don't know. So I might do a bit more here to play around with that. Um, but promising is what I would say. Um, steel wool has some promise too. You could do that. There's some pretty good effect there. 
So let's play around. Let's be creative. Maybe if I do more, just like half haphazardly everywhere with 400 grit. So if you've ever looked at like scratches on your car, that's kind of how they are. They're just uh, just in every direction. So, but I can just imagine somebody's gonna be like, well, yeah, it totally looks like you used sandpaper. Doesn't work, bro. So, hmm. So possibly more. But the 800 grit, I think, is too fine. So I might have to grab... I've got a 600 grit. I have to find some 600 grit. Because... If I've got 600 grit, maybe that's a happy medium. Maybe this is. Mm. Okay. Now we're talking. Because with 800 grit, it, it just kind of wants to polish it, but then it att attaches to it and just kind of rips it off it doesn't seem to be working right but i'm using this uh squadron premium tri grit the the hefty grip portion of it it's i don't know what grit that is because i don't label it but it's one of the, the three grits the heaviest of them so i'll try to see if i can find my 600 grit but that might be the happy medium because this is getting a pretty good effect Probably one of the favorites. And the answer to this probably is to do a couple of them, right? You know, uh, when people are doing the hairspray technique, uh, generally speaking, they don't just grab a toothbrush only. You're going to see a toothbrush. You're going to see also toothpicks. And, like, I don't why we use so much dental stuff in our hobby. But, um... Yeah, so what are our final thoughts on this? I want to get your take on it, see what you guys think. What are some of your concerns? What are some things that you're like, well, I would use it, but I'm hesitant because durability. Well, so far, I mean, it's... with my finger, I got to really force it unless there's a lot of it there, maybe. But it, it the lacquer is sticking together pretty good. Um, other concerns, I might try to come back to this, uh, see if after 24 hours of the paint on there, if that makes any difference. But most of all, do you think this is a good technique? Is this better than the, um, hairspray technique? Is it something that you're like, oh my goodness, this is a game changer? Or I'm like, Cameron, you're an idiot. Thanks for experimenting, but all you did was waste 20 minutes of my time probably gonna be longer than that um so let me know in the chat what you guys think to be honest i think this is gonna be my go-to now because with a lot of the hairspray um the you want to get enough activation of the hairspray but not so much that it just peels this big old clump of paint off um you want to just get just to the right amount of water and there's some fine tuning to this but this, I think there's less learning curve. I did this on my first try. Well, I guess second time to doing this, but uh, this is very much just an experimental piece. I I haven't, I mean, these results you're seeing in real time with me, I don't know. Uh, I, I had no clue um, that what would come out from this, but what I've, with my previous experiment in the video, I mean, that and this, this is all I've done. So... I think learning curve wise, this is a bit better. So you can be able to create the effect that you want a little faster. So just one final pass of the different effects. But yeah, I would like to try doing maybe like 
see what happens if we just like use a couple of these techniques together. I don't know. Looks pretty cool. So hit me up in the chat. Let me know what uh, is what you want me to do further on this. But I'm going to do a little bit more experimentation. I've got a whole other side of aluminum that I can technically play with. Got pretty horrible paint job, but it'll still serve the purpose. Um, the ne next application of this is going to be on a Spitfire. So I'm going to be working on that. And we'll see how fast I can get the fuselage together. You guys are gonna hate me because it's a expensive to me a kit, and I'm gonna I'm gonna close up the engine. I'm just not gonna deal with the engine because <sighs> I'm not gonna display engine open. I've got a, the same kit with the engine open, okay, all detailed. So yeah, so that is going to be in the future. We'll be looking at uh, applying that to an actual subject and what things look like and what methodology I'm gonna use there. So stay tuned for that. If you wanna make sure that you get that video. Make sure that you're uh, subscribing and you're going to the notification bell and doing all that so you get notified when my videos do drop because they are a little sporadic at the moment. I apologize. Thanks for watching.